NASA and SpaceX have come head-to-head -head in recent years. But what does this mean for the future of space travel? And more importantly, are they friends or foes? Humans have been roaming planet Earth for millennia, and it's true to say we're fairly familiar with our surroundings. Despite this, over 80% of our world's oceans remain unmapped, unexplored, untouched. This may sound like an astonishing figure, but we know even less about space. Humans know less than 1% of what lies beyond our green planet, less even than a fraction of a percentage. Still, two companies come out on top as leading the way for future discoveries, NASA and SpaceX. A brief history. The National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, was founded on the 1st of October 1958 by President Dwight D. Eisenhower. In signing the National Aeronautics and Space Act, Eisenhower promised that all activities in space should be devoted to peaceful purposes for the benefit of all mankind. Over a decade later, in 1969, Apollo 11 wrote history as the first successful moon landing. Decades after, and a whole millennium later, CEO Elon Musk, known also for founding electric and self-driving vehicle company Tesla, created SpaceX. This American startup envisioned one clear goal – to colonize Mars. The billionaire has, in fact, said on many occasions that human extinction on Earth would be inevitable, suggesting that colonizing another planet would help reduce the strain on our planet, which is fast running out of resources. Both companies then share a common interest in space travel. However, their ultimate goals are worlds apart, excuse the pun. While NASA's goal is to broaden mankind's knowledge and to promote discovery, SpaceX aims to utilize otherworldly resources that may help us to spread our wings one day. NASA. NASA, a government-owned and government-funded entity, arguably has more flexibility than the likes of a private company. This is because taxpayers' money can be devoted in varying proportions every year. The organization is currently best known for its International Space Station, a low-Earth orbit space laboratory 408 kilometers above our heads. Traveling at a speed of 7.66 kilometers per second, more than 17,000 miles per hour, it was launched in 1998 as a joint venture between American NASA, Russian Roscosmos, Japanese JAXA, European ESA, and Canadian CSA. The multinational effort was established to further our research, while it became the first permanently manned Earth orbiting station. Today, approximately one-third of NASA's entire budget is devoted to its science arm. That involves planetary science, Earth science, the study of the laws of physics and astrophysics, and heliophysics, or the study of the Sun and solar system. Other successes have included a pair of space probes referred to as Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. Previously reaching as far as Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, both of these space probes have since ventured further than what was previously unthought of. In 2012, Voyager 1 entered interstellar space, an area outside of the heliosphere where the Sun's hot winds meet a colder and much denser medium. Six years later, Voyager 2 crossed the boundary, carrying with it a first-of-its-kind instrument that will provide scientists with new types of measurements. Voyager 2 is said to be 11 billion miles away. Despite this, scientists are still able to communicate with the probe. Information sent from it, which travels at the speed of light, takes 16 and a half hours to reach the Earth, while the light from the Sun takes just eight minutes. The Artemis program envisions that man will once again land on the lunar surface by 2024, using information provided from this journey and its hundreds of other experiments to push this one giant leap forward to Mars. NASA's primary goal is to expand our knowledge on space-related matters, but in doing so, and utilizing its incredible power, three key educational steps are being taken much closer to home. Firstly, a research project on air quality is being carried out in conjunction with the American Environmental Protection Agency, or EPA. Using a High Spectral Resolution LiDAR, or HSRL for short, the duo are measuring smoke aerosols produced during wildfires, which have a devastating effect on our planet's air quality. Furthermore, research on climate change is being carried out. Currently in the learning stage, airborne radar devices are studying the flow of glaciers. While this may not propose an immediate solution, we're hoping that it will give us a glimpse of what may happen to ice masses in the future. This could potentially provide us with a time frame, helping to put pressure on companies and individuals alike to act quickly and responsibly about climate change. Finally, research about energy is being undertaken in conjunction with NASA's current space missions. The organization's space shuttle already makes use of hydrogen fuel, and the company is looking to expand hydrogen as a primary fuel source on land too, with its minimal impact on Earth's resources. SpaceX Now we move on to SpaceX, a company in its infancy when compared to the established NASA with its multinational reach. Privately owned by Elon Musk, it's arguably harder for such a company to survive. As with all private entities, cash flow is everything, and if he fails to strike up big enough deals with the right people, then the future of his company could be in pieces. 
The majority of this company's revenue comes from space launches. Commercial and military satellites are proving to be very successful for the company, which, against all odds, remains a not-for-profit organization. SpaceX currently operates two rockets, Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. Their purposes are to transport people. Dragon, a different type of reusable cargo spacecraft, was launched into orbit by the company's Falcon 9. It's particularly beneficial owing to the fact that it is able to transport both crew and cargo, both of which can be environmentally sensitive. What that means is that people, for example, cannot survive in environments that are extremely dissimilar to what is experienced on land. We're talking oxygen, air pressure and more. A third type of vessel, its Starship, can carry massive payloads to space and has been developed with the company's ultimate goal in mind – to colonize Mars. One day, it's believed that Starship will be able to transport people to the Red Planet to form a colony of inhabitants, expatriates. Along with the theme that SpaceX aims to utilize resources that have previously not been accessible by humans, the company recently began to launch its Starlink services. A constellation of thousands of small, mass-produced satellites that will provide planet Earth with fast, low-latency internet access, even in the most remote of places. NASA and SpaceX's Interreliance Today, SpaceX forms a crucial part of NASA's operations. In 2011, when the Space Shuttle program came to an end, the government-funded body did not have a replacement, partly due to the extraordinary costs involved. The solution, rather than to commission another company to build a fleet that it could call its own, would be to rent the work of other people. After all, why buy a car when you can commission a taxi for a journey that you take not so often? Well, the principle was the same here, and SpaceX rose to the challenge. SpaceX continued to make history. The Dragon that we discussed earlier, it took part in the first ever commercial berthing on the International Space Station, the first time any other company had interacted in such a way with NASA's work. SpaceX was also the first private company to send NASA astronauts to the International Space Station. Previously, this work had been done in-house. However, just like NASA relies on SpaceX, SpaceX wouldn't be here today without NASA. Almost a decade and a half ago, in 2006, NASA began investing in private companies, looking to outsource much of its work in favor of ultimately ending up cheaper. The American government-funded body, as a result, funded about half of the development costs for the Falcon 9 rocket, which it would later rely on. A few years later, in 2008, a multi-billion dollar contract was awarded to Musk's company to fly cargo to the International Space Station. Over a decade later, in 2021, NASA forms a large part of the private company's revenue. The relationship between both organizations is so complex that we can only begin to describe how it works, but one saying springs to mind. You scratch my back, and I'll scratch your back. Both companies have now become so reliant on one another that it's unlikely that they are going anywhere anytime soon. The future. So what does the future hold? The duo's work is not just restricted to low Earth orbit, that's for sure. While the purposes may be vastly different, both companies share similar goals of reaching points in outer space, such as the red planet Mars. In conjunction with NASA, SpaceX has recently been selected to design a moon lander, which will help the government-funded Artemis program reach the moon by 2024. Collaboration always ends up to be beneficial, and with cheaper and more frequent flights on the card, it only means one thing. More research will be carried out, helping both companies achieve goals of expanded knowledge and space travel. This collaboration between state-funded and privately owned is arguably the most important in space history. Do you think these close links will lead to better performance? Or maybe you have a concern that one company's bias may impact another?